Hey guys and gals, we're here again today at Hard Racing and today we're going to do a video on our most popular frequently asked questions and we're going to answer them and obviously if any of you guys and gals have dealt with us before um, you know we're all about helping our customers out even people that don't buy from us come and ask us for help and we help them um, we're, that's what we're here for you know knowledge is power and the more you know the more you understand your bike um, and everything about it the more you can enjoy it um, for some guys obviously they don't want to know anything they just want to go ride it and that's cool but for most of us especially ones that do installations or want to tweak things or just make your bike unique it's it's good to know as much as you can about the bike so we're always here to help and we answer as many questions as we can emails forums Facebook um, pretty much every every form even phone calls and, and uh, whatnot and today we're gonna go over and do a video on our most popularly asked questions to kind of help people that are new or just in general don't know everything they want to know about the bike so this is this is what we're going to do today and this is all right now on the Grom we're going to do f other videos for other bikes and just general videos um, for everything motorcycle related but for right now or today we're just doing the Grom and just going over some questions our number one question um, hands down asked on the Grom is do I need a fuel controller usually it's do I need a power commander but it's do I need a fuel controller and the answer is no not really um, the reality is it just also comes down to what you've done to your bike and what you're gonna do to your bike so if you just slapped on an intake or a filter or just an exhaust you can run it without a fuel controller now eventually you're gonna probably want one to make it run better but it's not going to hurt your bike necessarily by not having it. Yes, it will make it run lean. Um, it will run a little hotter. And there have been guys that say they've burned up their stock piston. But for the most part, you can run it without a fuel controller and be fine. Eventually, 99% of the guys that really want the most out of their bike, the most performance, the most you know enjoyment out of it, they will get a fuel controller. Our best seller, hands down, the Power Commander. Um, but they all, as long as it's a good quality fuel controller, just do your research. Um, that's what I always recommend. You can take our word for it. You can, you know, ask around, whatever. But just do your research. Don't just go buy something because it's cheap and then it winds up being garbage and then you got to go sell it on eBay for 100 bucks. Save yourself the hassle. Do your research. Find the products right for you. But to answer your question, no, you don't have to have one. Will you eventually want to get one? Probably. Now, the only caveat in that is... If you're doing a big bore kit we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video but if you're doing a big bore kit yes you have to have a fuel controller you cannot run the stock air fuel ratio which is like 14.7 up to 15 16 on a high compression big bore kit it's gonna burn it up now sure there's guys that have done oh yeah I did it yeah for a couple hundred miles and then eventually the system the piston seizes up because it overheats so to answer that part of it, if you're doing a big bore kit, yes, you have to have a fuel controller, period. Next question is intakes, Chimera versus uh, filters versus um, homemade, you know. Honestly, anything's better than the stock air box. Um, a BMC filter or k filter is a good start. Um, if you get rid of the air box and do some form of snorkel intake, that's definitely going to be even better because it's more free-flowing. Um, we prefer ourselves the Chimera. That's our best seller, hands down, because A, it forces the filter directly into the oncoming air. It's not sideways. It's not pointed down. And the design of it, the whole concept of it, is to funnel air in there as fast as you can, which is the whole point of an intake, is to get as much air jammed into there as you can. Obviously, the Grom only goes 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, so you're not going to get a whole lot of ram air effect, but you are getting pressurized air forced into there. That definitely is a benefit. It saves some weight, and it retains your IAT sensor, which is kind of important. A lot of guys don't think it is, but it is. It, you're supposed to have that where your intake charge is, not sticking up somewhere above your motor or hanging down or whatever. And, of course, number one thing uh, that the Chimera has that most of the other uh, ones don't is the um, crankcase breather hose. A lot of guys, oh yeah, just stick that somewhere. That's not good. Now sure, if you get a filter, a little pod filter for that breather hose, another 15 bucks or whatever, then yeah, now you're cleaning the air. But if you just stick it up somewhere, 
it may be protected from rain, but it's still sucking in and out dirty air. So if you go through some, you know, dusty whatever on the road, it's going to eventually get in your crankcase. Now, it may not be like, oh, the first time it happens, it'll blow up your motor or anything. But over time, especially if you plan on keeping this a long time, eventually you're going to get crap into your crankcase that's not supposed to be in there. So that's kind of important. Uh, another question that we get asked a lot is how do I get my bike to go faster? So that's really just comes down to your budget. Um, the easiest, quickest way to make it go faster bone stock trim is just sprockets. Just change the gearing out. You know, if you do like a 14 tooth front sprocket, your bike's going to go faster. It will hit a top end, you know, speed limit of certain whatever, but it's going to accelerate faster. Now, if you actually want your bike to go faster zero to 60 and excel that a little bit more like maybe 70 miles an hour again depending on your weight then you're going to want to get a sprocket um, a chimera these are all our recommendations again you can use whatever you want we're just telling you what we found works great sprocket chimera power commander and a full system those four are going to give your bike a monster kick in the pants a great acceleration uh, the next step after that would be a camshaft, and that's what a lot of guys have done. Just bam, just just those mods and go out and ride, and, and the bike's fast, you know. I mean, so again, it just it depends on your budget. If you want to go all out, you get a big bore kit, you know. But obviously, the costs pile higher and higher. So, um, but that's that's what it comes down to. Those are your your easiest, quickest mods: sprocket first, then a Chimera or an intake, um, then an exhaust. And after you've done all that, you're really going to want a power commander or a fuel controller of some form. The nice thing, again, about a power commander, um, you can raise the rev limit. So if you are doing stock bore, you can raise the rev limit so you can get a more on top end. You can advance the ignition timing, and the Grom was shown to get almost a horsepower gain by advancing the ignition 6 degree. Um, you can't do that on most of the other fuel controllers. Um, you can add a quick shifter, add an auto-tune wideband, um, POD, LCD display. There's a lot of extra stuff you can do with it. Um, but those are going to get you that top end speed. Um, the next thing is, what's the best sprocket? Again, that all depends on what you're doing. For most guys, um, just like stock trim bike or just exhaust, a 14 tooth front's good. Go up maybe one in the rear. Um, once you go with a big bore kit and you've doubled or tripled the horsepower, then you're going to actually go the opposite. You're going to do like a 16 front and a 32 rear. And you're like, well, why would you do that? Because you've doubled or tripled the horsepower and torque of the bike, so now you gotta bring the revs down so that you stay in the proper rev range. Um, another popular question that we get asked all the time, suspension, what should I do first? Fork, shock, you know? And that, again, a lot of this stuff comes down to what is your budget? Um, you know, you can get by, there's guys that just throw some thicker oil in there. We consider that kind of like a band-aid. I guess if you go from a zero being garbage to a 10 being awesome, your stocks being zero, just thicker oil is probably like a one or two. Uh, the next step would be do is better oil and stiffer fork springs because thicker oil, all that does is just increase the veloc viscosity of the oil you know, and how it flows, but you still have crappy soft springs in there, so you're still going to bottom out at the end of the day. Um, the springs are really what you need if you're a heavier guy or even if you're not 125 pounds then you need stiffer springs so stiffer springs um, a little bit better oil that's that's a good step ultimately the best is to get a fork cartridge kit which is stiffer springs for better fork oil and the cartridge kit itself that's going to greatly improve the front end of your bike it'll make it feel better more comfortable we won't bottom out It'll turn in better. The bike will just handle better. And of course, then on the other end, you're going to want a rear shock. Some guys do the shock first and then wind up, oh my gosh, the front end feels even worse. It happens. Or if you do great front end, then the rear end feels worse. So, you know, again, it just fits your budget. You know, just the price range. Just get what you can afford. Don't go crazy unless you want to, but just get what you can afford and also look forward to what you might do. You know, a lot of times, like example, the Fort Cartridge Kit, um, it's easy to do, but it is a little bit labor, you know, two hours usually for most people that have never done it before. So if you're going to tear it all apart and you're just doing the fork springs, but then you think you're going to do the valve kit in like four months, then just get the valve kit, you know, get the whole thing all at once. So you don't have to tear the forks down twice. 
save yourself labor, save yourself time, save yourself oil, because you're gonna drain that oil out. So just think ahead sometimes. The shock obviously takes about what five, ten minutes to swap that out. So you know that's not a big deal, but the forks is something you should plan on. Shocks, um, obviously there's a lot of choices out there. You know, just just do your research, take one that fits your budget. You have YSS at the bottom of the budget, and then Olin's and then um, card. So, I mean, just find the ones that fit your budget. We prefer the Olin's personal preference. We've been selling them for 15, 16 years. They've been around 35 years. If you don't know who Olin's is, you probably live under a rock. Um, that's just our personal preference, but they're, most of them are all good shocks. Just get what you can afford, but do your research. The worst thing you can do is just buy something and then do your research afterwards and then go, oh man, I wish I bought something else. So just do your research, spend your money wisely. Um, next thing, popular question, brakes. Why do I need better brakes? What's wrong with the ones I have? Honestly, that is totally, brakes are totally opinion. For us, we've always had good brakes on all our bikes because we ride aggressive, especially on the streets. We don't break the laws, but we do ride aggressive. And sometimes things happen. Car pulls out in front of you, dog runs out in front of you, sand on the road, some idiot switches lanes in front of you. I mean, cars don't look out for cars, let alone motorcycles. So for us, as a personal thing, you know, we're all about having the best brakes you can have. The best feel, the best performance, the best stopping power. That's our personal opinion because we've all had it where a car pulls out in front of us and we gotta lay on the brakes and we stop just in time because we all had good brakes. Now, you may think, well, you know, as you can probably see on our website, we've done you know braking distance uh, measuring, you know, and, and a whole testing and everything, and we save five, 10, 15 feet, and you may oh at 30 miles an hour, and you may think oh that's not a big deal. That's the difference between you stopping behind a car or you running into the car and going through the back window. It can be. Now not every situation is like that, and it's but for us it's just it's a safety thing more than anything, is we prefer to have the best brakes we can that will stop us as fast as possible when something happens. And it all comes down to you ride. If you're always out, in the out, out of town, out of the way, then you're only gonna have to really worry about a deer or an animal or whatever, but if you drive around town, if you drive in traffic, cars are crazy. So for us, better brake, you just can't get better brakes. It's just, that's, it's always the best brakes you can get. That's what we always go for. And that's why we advertise and offer better brakes. So for people that feel the same way and say, yeah, the stock brakes are crap, I, I want better so I can stop faster and have a better feel, that's the way to go. Another popular question that we get asked all the time, what is the best exhaust? Which exhaust should I get? A lot of, you'll see the common theme in a lot of our answers is, it depends on what you want and what fits your budget. All the exhausts these days on the Grom are pretty good. There are some that are kind of crappy that, again, do your research. You'll see that people have had exhausts where they fall apart, they crap out. It all depends on where they're made. You know, you can get some really, really high quality, like Acropovic, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars You can get some really garbage exhausts on eBay for like a hundred bucks. There's a reason it's a hundred dollars or fifty dollars or whatever. It's because it's crap. Now, will it work? Yeah, sure. Does some guy have it and love it? Sure. Now, six months from now, will that have rusted off or fallen off or the welds braked on them? Probably. So do your research, but also it comes down to what do you like? Low mount, high mount, carbon can, stainless? Are you gonna stunt? So maybe carbon not makes the most sense. It just comes down to what you want, but honestly, get a reputable exhaust and you're gonna be happy with it. And the only other thing you may wanna consider when getting one, which a lot of guys don't think about till after is, if you plan on getting a wide band commander or an auto tune, something that, that has an 18 millimeter bung, you may want to look at an exhaust that already comes with that. And it's one less thing you got to deal with and one less thing you headache you got to worry about when you go to install that because it's already on there. So just something to think about and consider. Uh, another popular question we get asked all the time, camshaft. What camshaft should I get? They're all good camshafts. DCR, um, Yosh, Takigawa, Kotako, um, Koso. They're all good camshafts. It really just comes down to, for us, you know, because a lot of them, here's the thing, a lot of guys are like, well, show me the specs on all of them. They don't all show you the specs. Some of them will show you duration. Some will show you lift. Um, 
But honestly, we've measured a lot of them, and, and they don't match their recommendation. They don't match their specs. So for us, it's just it's feedback from customers. We've tried them all. We like them all. Um, but honestly, it's feedback from customers. Um, the one thing that we will say is we only sell core cams, and we don't sell regrinds, just a personal preference. Everybody loves the DCR. That's cool. But we personally just sell core cams. It's just less wear and tear on the valve train. Um, the valve stems, the lift, everything is just it's less load because the ramp angle is not as steep as it is on a core cam because basically the actual solid part of the core is wider diameter so you don't have this start, uh, steep of a ramp which doesn't put as less load on the valve train which also means you don't have to run dual rate springs or high, high, uh, high spring rates which then in turn wears out your rollers as people have seen, cracks your button on the tensioner. Again, there's plenty of guys that have run DCRs for thousands of miles and love them. That's fine. No knock against them. It's a great cam. This is just our personal preference. As far as what cam do we recommend, um, our best sellers, Tak Takigawa and the Katakos, are great cams. Um, they're low price range. You know, a little over 100 bucks. They work great and they make power everywhere. Low, mid, and top end power. So that's also something. Cams, some cams are mostly just top end power and some make more broad range power, which is good for guys that ride everywhere. If you're racing, then you just need a top end cam. Um, if you ride your Grom everywhere and all the time, then you want a more broad range cam. Tires, um, for, for all you guys that just got the bike, uh, get rid of those tires, get rid of them. Anybody that knows tires knows that the stock ones are crap. Um, yeah, if you just commute to work, you'll probably be okay. But if you start going around in the corners and having some fun, the stock ones are just garbage. I'm talking about the OG, not the SF. The SF, at least on ours, came with better rubber, but the, the V rubbers that come on the OG Grom, um, they're crap. So get better tires. What we recommend, again, always personal preference, uh, the Pure SCs, they're a great tire. Um, there are stickier tires, especially if you're a racer or if you're just crazy in the canyons, there are better tires. But the SC overall is a great tire for every kind of riding. And if you ever get stuck in the rain, it's got a high silica content, so it is a little bit stickier in the rain. But again, uh, it's just way better than stock, and that's all that matters. You just get something better than stock. And as far as width-wise, um, the stock is a 120 70 and rear 130 uh, 70. You can go to a 140. It's a little taller, so that it'll um, slightly lower your speedometer, and it'll give you a little bit more top end if your bike can pull it. So. Some, something to think about. Um, another popular question we get asked all the time, uh, what big bore kit do I need to get? Which one should I get? And again, as always, that comes back to your budget. Um, get what fits your budget. We have big bore kits from $199 up to $1,200. Um, it just comes down to what you're wanting out of the bike and what fits your budget. So if you just want a little kick in the pants, just go with a 143 big bore kit. You can get one with or without a cam. Um, if you want a little bit more, go with the 181. Uh, if you want a little more, go with the Finbro 183 or the Kotako Neo kit, which is a complete big bore kit. But just get what fits your budget and what fits your needs. Um, and that's really, I mean, honestly, there are a lot of big bore kits out there um, on the market. We personally have only chosen to carry the good quality ones that we have on our website, the ones that we believe in, the ones we have hardly 0.001% failure rate. Those are the ones that we sell. Um, there are other uh, big board kits out there that we chose not to carry. I'm not going to get into that, but if you don't see it on our website, there's a reason we chose not to carry it. It's nothing personal. It's not, we're not bashing anybody else. We just chose not to carry it. So you can feel confident if you see it on our website, then we stand behind it. We like it. We just, we're not one of those companies that will carry any product, no matter what it is, and sell it. Who cares? Because for us, it's more important that our customers are happy with what they get that they tell all their friends they're happy, you know, that they enjoy the product and tell all their friends and spread the word because that's more important than just selling something making a buck because we don't want customers coming back saying, you said this is great, but it's crap because that's not what we're about. Uh, let's see here. What do I need to get with my big bore kit? So that for probably hands down our number one answer is you have to get a fuel controller and preferably a um, air fuel ratio monitor like an auto tuner wide band. 
Um, basically, your stock Grom runs, again, 14.7 to 15, 16 0, which is really, really lean. It's fine for a stock bike, which is a low compression piston, but it's not, you can't run that on a high compression piston or you'll get knock. Knock is when you get pre detonation and everything starts to overheat and eventually your piston swells and locks up. So, yes, you can for temporarily get by running a big bore kit without any fuel controller, but you will very quickly burn up and ruin all that money you spent in time installing it. So be smart and in the bare minimum get a fuel controller and a preferably a auto tuner wide band air monitor system so that you can see that you're running the proper air fuel ratio. Um, the Grom, as you probably have seen in our videos, is a little funky with the with the fuel mapping. So our recommended um, setup is the Power Commander and the Wide Band. Those two together control the complete rev um, with the fuel mapping, and you can monitor and make sure it's running correctly. Um, another thing you need to do, it's highly recommended, um, the Tacky Gal High Flow fuel Oil Pump. It's it's like 55, 60 bucks. Your, your 30-40% more oil flow is just a no-brainer when you're running a big bore kit. And eventually you're probably going to run an oil cooler, so that's even more reason to get that. So that's definitely something to get. Um, if you are in high temperature areas, go with a oil cooler because heat is your enemy in a big bore kit. Hands down, if your engine overheats, you're going to ruin your big bore kit. There's just no way around it. So to keep the temperatures down, best you can, you want to get an oil cooler, which then decreases your temperatures and also makes the bike run and last longer. So make sure you get a good quality one too. There are some garbage ones on eBay. I'm not going to say names, but just do your research. If it's 50 bucks for an oil cooler, eh, you know, it could be a reason for it. Now, don't get me wrong. We've seen guys who make their own oil coolers where they just get a core oil cooler, just a core for 50 bucks and then they get their own lines and all the brackets, all that stuff. That's probably, that makes about, you know, the same price range. But if you get a whole complete kit, everything included, everything for 50 bucks, uh, that may be an issue. And do not, please do not get ones that scavenge the oil off of the head. Like literally, the line goes off of one of the cylinder studs. We've seen guys use those before. They scavenge it from the head, then they wind up locking up something inside because it's pulling, get something that's purpose built. Purpose built means that the design of the system was made to run an oil cooler, not an afterthought. That's why we push and sell so many of the Kotaku clutch covers because they're purpose built to run oil coolers. There are some big bore kits that also are purpose built and have oil ports on them. Those work as well. Just make sure it's not something that was just, hey, let's just stick a hole here or let's just pull some oil off of this and it should be fine. I always use an analogy, think about it like the veins and the arteries in your body. If you just tapped in somewhere and bypassed something and, fl and flowed oil, uh, blood somewhere else and then stuck it back somewhere else in your body and you happen to bypass your kidneys, your, your, your stomach, whatever, that's not good. That's kind of like what it is with a big bore kit, I mean with an oil cooler. If you just bypass something and just stick the oil somewhere else in the motor, that's not good. It needs to be purposely built and designed. Uh, let's see here, uh, another good question that we get asked a lot of times, what LED kit should I get for my bike? So obviously on the OG Grom, the stock headlight is total crap. Everybody knows it. Um, you can get a cheap uh, $8, $10 bulb at um, AutoZone or uh, Pet Boys or whatever, Walmart, that's just a little bit brighter. Or as most guys do, you get LEDs. Um, we have three different kinds. We have a single bulb, which is an OEM replacement. Uh, just pull out the old one, stop sticking the new one. Um, it's got a special wire that goes and taps to get you DC current, and you're good to go. That one is um, basically, we'll say, level one. The next level up is a LED cluster, which is um, a bunch of bulbs, but obviously the cluster is this big. The hole in the back of your headlight is that, so it can't fit through there. So you got to heat up the lens with a hair dryer or hot air gun and pop it off. Assemble the cluster, heat up the lens. Basically, you're, you're loosening up the gasket, and then you're putting the lens back on. Some people are like, oh, oh, I don't want to deal with that. And that's cool, and that's why the single bulb is a better choice um, for those kind of people. If you're okay with just heating up the gasket, swapping out the lens, putting it back on, then get the cluster. Um, if you want daylight coming out of the front of your bike, then get the double row LED bars that we sell. That literally is like turning on the, the daylight. It's incredibly bright um, 
and just awesome. But it's also personal preference on looks because now you don't have the stock headlight anymore. So some guys like light look and they don't want to get that kind of military look of the double row. So again, each three of those are just, you know, different levels, different stages of what you want out of it, but they're all going to be way, way better than stock. Um, another popular question we get asked by those that don't know, why did you buy a Grom? Why do you have a Grom? Why do you ride a Grom? And honestly, if you ask that question, you probably have not ridden one. Um, but the reality is a Grom's awesome fun. I mean, just a blast to ride around. So easy. It just throw a leg on and go ride. Anybody can ride it. Um, it's, it's great. It's not sure it's not made to go on the interstates at 150 miles an hour. Um, but it's, you know, $3,000 or $3,200 new. And now you can get them for use for like 2,800 bucks. You can't be a, it's just a hooligan bike. It's just fun to ride. And honestly, before we got one, we were kind of like, what, Grom, really? And then we got it and all of us love it, you know? And it's funny because we have, you know, a 200 horsepower BMW S1000 over there. And it's just as fun to ride the Grom sometimes as it is the BMW. The BMW is like, you know, just a beast. And sure, when you go on the interstate and roll third gear wheelies like nothing, that's great and do 150 miles an hour and smoke everything on the planet. But it's just, it's a beast. It takes a lot out of you and takes a lot of work. Whereas the Grom is just so easy to ride and just have so much fun. And the crazy thing about the Grom is when you go ride around, like I'll ride and Carrie will be on the Grom and I'll be on the BMW and we'll get Harleys, cruisers, cars, trucks. They'll pull up or they'll stop us at, you know, a parking lot or a gas station and be like, oh, what is that? And I'm thinking they're talking about the BMW. Like, no, they're talking about the Grom. And it's just, it's a crazy, you know, the, it's just absolutely crazy what people's reaction is to the Grom. And it's, everybody who owns a Grom has experienced that. So if you have to ask why Grom, go out and try one before you diss it, because it is fun. It's, it's just, it's a great blast to ride around. Uh, another popular question, clutch springs. Um, what should I get for clutch springs? So you got EBCs, 10%, tacos, 50%, some other brands out there. Um, we recommend getting, and they're all really like 10 to 20 bucks, so price isn't a really big deal. We recommend the Katakos, the stiffer ones, 50%, because you can adjust how much you want out of the spring pressure. Because basically, if you put all, all six of them, now they're 50% stiffer. You can just put in four of them and two stock ones, and it'll be a little bit less. You can put in two of them and four stock ones, and it'll be even less. So you have the adjustability to go from two, four, or all of them so that you can tweak how much squeeze you want out of it. Whereas if you just get like a you know, set that's just 10%, then that's all it is, it's just 10%. Sure, you could swap out some with stock and have it like 8% or six, but you're not really gonna feel the difference between six, eight, or 10. But you will feel the difference between 10, 20, 25, 40, 50. So that's what we recommend. If you are gonna do stiffer springs though, for sure we recommend getting the billet spring plate. Um, there's been plenty of guys you can see all over the internet who have had the stock ones break on them. Uh, I think a lot of it's got to do with how they installed it. They probably just cranked one bolt all the way in and then the tab snapped off. But at the end of the day, it can break. It's cast, it's, it's cheap. Um, and if you have one of those break on your motor while you're riding, that's not good. So if you're going to get stiffer springs, get a billet spring plate for sure. Uh, let's see here. Another popular question that we get asked all the time. How do I get one of those sweet hard racing t-shirts? You know, one of these. And our answer is it's super easy. Anytime you place an order on our website, every single product we carry, there'll be a little product option that says, would you like to add hard racing t-shirt? It's only $5.95. $5, you can't even get a blank, crappy, worn out, garbage t-shirt at, at some thrift store for $5. So this you're getting a really nice Gildan, hard racing logo, factory logos on the side, really nice t-shirt for $5.95. We actually lose money selling these t-shirts, honest to God. That's why when guys are like, just throw on some free, it's like, guys, we're already losing money on it. So it's $5.95, it's a super fair price, it's a great t-shirt, and it's super easy to order on our website. Anytime, any product you want, you'll see a little product option that says, add the t-shirt. Next question, are BST wheels worth it? The answer is, yeah. Honestly, they, they're lighter weight, they look phenomenal, they'll handle a little bit better because you have less spinning mass, less gyroscopic mass, 
So your bike accelerates a little faster, it brakes a little quicker, it turns in a little quicker. Think of it, pick it up a box fan while it's running and it's hard to control because of the gyroscopic effect. That's the way the wheels are. So if you have less mass spinning, your bike will turn in a little easier, it'll stop a little quicker, it'll accelerate a little faster. Everything's just a little bit better. So that's for sure. And man, you want to talk about bike porn or eye candy? These wheels, the pictures on the website don't do us justice. If you really want a unique looking bike that when you go somewhere, everybody's like, oh my gosh, BST wheels give you that. And that's not the best reason to buy them, unless you've just got money coming out the yin yang or you got a money tree in your backyard. But that is a extra bonus on why you bought them. And that goes to the next um, part of this answer is the resale value of those is phenomenal. You know, there are very few parts and products that you can buy that you can use for a year or two. And if you take care of them, sell it for like 70, 80, 90% of what you paid for it. Um, BST wheels we attribute are like Rolex watch. Everybody wants one, not everybody can afford one. So if you get one, a set of BST wheels, and you use them, and eventually you sell your Grom or get a different bike or whatever, you could sell those wheels and get a good chunk of your money back. There's very few products that you can buy on a motorcycle or cars or anything that you can use that's that expensive but then go ahead and turn around and sell them you know a year or two later again if they're in good condition and get almost all your money back so as far as investment wise just think about it if you had BST wheels and you used them for a couple years and you lost like two three hundred bucks is that really that big a deal I mean that's like two sets of tires so you know that's some that's one way to look at it but you do get you get a performance increase in threefold that you don't get from anything else acceleration braking and handling you can't get that from any other modification so wheels for sure are one of the best lightweight wheels are one of the best mods you can do for your bike to improve all three so again are they worth it if you can afford it yes if you can't eh, don't go stretching you know use money that you shouldn't be using to buy them but if you can't afford it and you really want a unique bike and you want the bike to handle better, accelerate faster, brake quicker, then yeah, they're a good investment. Um, another question we get asked all the time, and this is kind of funny, a little tongue in cheek, how do I get my lady to stop riding my bike? Go out and buy her one, man. There's nothing better than having two Groms, even if she doesn't ride it that much. Having two Groms is really cool. That way, if your buddy comes over, you can go ride together. Um, or again, if you want your lady to stop riding yours, get her one too. She'll love you for it. You guys can ride together. It's really cool to have a partner to ride with. Um, most all of us have them here at the shop and it's just, it's, it's fun. It's so much more fun to ride with somebody else. Um, yes, you always have your buddies to go ride with, but you got to plan it. You got to call, you got to work it out. If your lady has got one and you, Hey honey, let's go ride. You go ride. It's just, it's cool. So again, some of this was tongue in cheek. Some of this was fun. Um, we hope that this was informative for you. We'll, we'll do more videos of these. If you have questions, comments, please post them up on here on this video link. We will do another one if we get enough questions asked. Um, also, please make sure to give a thumbs up if you enjoyed our video. We do this for you guys. I mean, at the end of the day, we do this for you guys. Um, we've got now 1.2 million views on our YouTube channel for a tiny little niche market. You know, that's something you always got to take into account. You can get 1.2 million views if you do a cat hanging off of a tree, you know, or chasing a, a little um, laser light. But this is a video um, towards a tiny little niche market, which is the Honda Grom and motorcycles in general. You know, we do Z125s, RC3, 90s, R3s, you know, we do all the bikes. But again, this is just a, such a tiny little niche market in the grand scheme of the world. We're not doing videos on politics or, or Buzzfeed or, you know, um, Hollywood actors. We're doing videos on this tiny little niche market. So 1.2 million views in like two years, it's, that's because of you guys. So obviously we do these videos for you guys. Tell us how you feel. Tell us what you think. Tell us what other videos you'd like us to do. Um, please give a thumbs up. And most importantly, please subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends, but subscribe to our channel. Uh, we need the support. That's what we do this for, is for you guys to support. And we hope that you enjoy it. So if you have any other questions, um, again, uh, be sure to comment on the site. And if you have any questions, send us emails, uh, PMs on the forums, Facebook and give us a call. But most importantly, if you have uh, any more interest in any products, check us out at 
hardracing.com.